Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Well, today I have some really exciting things to talk about. You know, we have these homes or houses rather and we're trying to make them homes and we have these dreams and these visions and these wish lists. Today, I'm going to share with you 30 things, three zero, that are on my wish lists for my dream home. Now, um, I currently live in a builder grade home, and if you are in the same situation and you feel stuck in this drab, plain Jane builder grade home, never fear. These 30 ideas are going to rock your world and give you so much inspiration for things that you can do in your own home. Let's get into the details. Homes today are built fast and cheap and are definitely short on all of that old vintage charm and character and even the craftsmanship of yesteryear. I am in the same boat you are, friend, if you're stuck in a very plain home. 10 years ago, my husband and I bought our very first home in a small subdivision in rural Missouri. It was the prettiest house on the block, I still think that it is, but it is very, very builder grade. Now, maybe you don't know what builder grade means. Builder grade just means that literally they did as cheap of a job as possible with anything in the house. There is no real craftsmanship, no real charm or character in this home. It was very cookie cutter. And I've spent the last 10 years trying to solve problems for the next owners of this house, since this is not my forever home. And I've spent those 10 years trying to figure out easy and inexpensive ways that I can put character into each room, layer by layer, without going completely broke. And that's the key right there. I could do so much to this house, but we are living on a single teacher's income for a family of seven. So there is not a lot of money to go around, especially when it comes to frivolous things like basically the things that aren't necessary. But to me, they really make a house a home. It's your own style, you're adding to it. There are so many gorgeous elements that you can add, obviously, because I've made a pretty massive list of 30 items. But one important aspect that I want to drive home today is that it's about taking your time to curate an entire home of vintage charm, room to room, from scratch. So it is a process. It's not just a run to the hardware store and boom, you've got a whole room that's just dripping with vintage charm. It's not how it works. It sometimes takes years. So anything that you see in my home has been a culmination of a decade. And of course you can do it faster. It just depends on your income or your style and taste. Without further ado, let us get into this list of 30 great things that you can do to add old charm to a builder grade home. Number one is wall treatments. Here are six unique ways that you can add charm to a build a grade home just putting some stuff up on your walls. Now you can add one or two or you could do all six if you really wanted to be extra. Though I will caution you that less typically is more in these departments so you want to pick maybe two or three elements at max especially for a smaller room. The first wall treatment I want to talk about is beadboard. Beadboard became very popular in the early 1900s better known as the Victoria era, and it has made a very strong comeback. I have two resources for each of these things on my list to help you get started in any of the projects that you choose. Number two is shiplap, really. I don't think I have to say much about shiplap. It's pretty well known these days. It has been around for at least a century, if not more. It is such a simple way to add great, simple charm to a home. The next one is faux brick panels. There are several ways to get this look in your home and I will link two different resources in my post. One of them I thought was so ingenious, they actually didn't even use panels at all. They used painter's tape and created a grid the size of bricks and then used joint compound to create the actual bricks 
on the wall, which I think is ingenious, and I'm actually planning on trying that tutorial in one of my daughter's bedrooms, since I was already going to do a brick wall panel in there. It just seems like it would be a lot more fun and probably more cost effective. The next one is board and batten. There are plenty of, like a plethora of examples of what board and batten can look like. There are so many unique ways that people have learned to use it um, to style a wall. If you have smooth walls, you're just a few one by fours away from creating a gorgeous, stylish room using board and batten. So check out those tutorials in the post. Wainscoting. Wainscoting is a prime example of how to add old charm to a builder grade home. It is the epitome of skilled craftsmans craftsmanship. <laughs> there are definitely simpler styles that would be a really fun weekend project. The next one is wallpaper. And if you have smooth walls where you can actually use wallpaper, I envy you. I have textured walls, so if I were to put wallpaper up on my wall, it would look like my walls had acne. And the best news is you can literally put it in any room in your house and it will add so much charm and character to it. So actually item number two, we haven't gotten that far, is to replace fixtures, lights, which is ceiling fixtures, lamps, sconces, pendant lights, and even your outdoor lighting. Bathroom, powder room, and kitchen, the fixtures in there would be faucets, sinks, toilets, shower heads, and even tubs if you are brave enough. I'm not brave enough, but this is also not my dream home. So if it was my dream home, I probably would go to that extent. Number three on my list is cabinets. Painted, stained, or natural wood tones. Before I would paint something, I would try putting hardware on it and see if that helps update it enough. Sometimes just doing that little extra step makes all the difference in the world. In fact, it can be fast and expensive and an unintrusive way of updating any kind of cabinetry. You can paint any kind of cabinet built in or freestanding to add old charm to a builder grade home. I actually painted my kitchen cabinets with chalk paint, homemade chalk paint. And I have a recipe for that on my blog, which is linked in my post also. And I used a clear coat on top of that. And I've had it that way for at least four years. And I can honestly say we've not had any issues with it whatsoever. It is a great way to update your cabinets. Number four is trim and molding. As you can see in my room, and it, this is something that I'm actively doing in my own home. Windows, doors, crown molding, baseboards, chair rail, which I have up, picture frame molding and picture rail trim. I have actually two videos that have to do with creating and installing your own trim in your home to update any builder grade trim you might have. One of them is how I'm creating my own farmhouse style trim and I will link that little card up here for you to watch. And then the second one is actually um, a prerequisite to that one, which is how I use cheap wood and make it pretty so that I can put it up on the walls and it looks good. And I will put that card up here for you as well. Number five is open shelving. I chose to do this in my kitchen personally. I had probably another foot and a half of space up to the ceiling that was not being utilized and I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. And also my cabinets were so low I couldn't even fit my KitchenAid on my countertops. If you're dealing with some similar issues like this then maybe you should just go ahead and rip those upper cabinets out like I did. And I never looked back either. For me, the vision of an old apothecary or general store is what comes to mind when I dream of my perfect kitchen. And let's not forget the butler's pantry that is gonna come with that. I swear. Number six is farmhouse sinks. Now I already talked a little bit about sinks, but I felt like farmhouse sinks needed its own mention because it adds so much charm to a room. Vintage style sinks are my favorite. They have the power to turn a boring builder grade kitchen, bathroom, laundry room, or even mud room and turn it into something stylish. Not to mention those things are Hardy. I mean, people are using sinks that are well over a hundred years old and still in great shape. If you wanna make a huge impact with a single purchase, this is a great place to look. Number seven is butcher block countertops. Now, to be historically accurate, I watched a video recently from Farmhouse Vernacular where she talked about the 
depth of countertop wood. And you actually apparently want to go slimmer, like three quarters of an inch to be more of a historically accurate wooden countertop instead of the really thick butcher block that's really popular today. Number eight is vintage and antique doors. Paint to build or grade options or replace with vintage and antique doors. If you're on a tight budget, your best option would be to paint and it would make a huge impact. Just paint your builder grade doors a really beautiful color and you would be amazed at how gorgeous your hallway will become with just that little bit of a change. Number nine is faux wood beams doors, doorways, and ceilings. And it doesn't have to be the real thing, but if you have access to real wooden beams that you could use, by all means, use them. Pine and Prospect actually had her husband cut some beams in half with a, a chainsaw, believe it or not, to put up on their ceilings because they have low kitchen ceilings. And so this is hope for you because even with low ceilings, you can still make this work and it will add so much beautiful cottage charm to a kitchen or a living room or wherever you wanna put them, honestly, you can put them anywhere. And I've also seen great a great tutorial um, that is faux wood beams by Hanging with Hughes here on YouTube. And I will link that in the notes section below. Number 10 is ceiling medallion. Oh my goodness. Let us not forget the ceilings. Consider ceilings the fifth wall. We can't leave them out. The epitome of high living, if you ask me, you look up into the ceiling and you see this gorgeous medallion of craftsmanship. They're ornate, delicate, feminine, and simply breathtaking, especially when you pair them with a vintage light fixture like a chandelier. You look up in ceilings in modern homes and they are blank, empty, and forgetful. Three words you probably never wanna hear when you speak about a house. 11, sliding doors, barn wood doors, antique doors, or pocket doors. I am obsessed with pocket doors. Every time I see one of those DIY shows where they're ripping out pocket doors, I wanna come over there and scream because I would love to have pocket doors. Just think about how convenient that would be to have your doors hidden in a wall. You don't have to deal with anything swinging out or in. It's just brilliant. Whoever came up with the idea is a genius. But sliding doors don't have to be rustic, obviously. You could choose to go the rustic route and use a barn door, or you could use an antique door and hang it the exact same way that a barn door would be. Number 12 is furniture. One of my favorite ways to add charm to a room because it is so easy. You find something you like, you bring it home, and either you just clean it and use it as is, or you can do some more stuff to it to give it even additional character. There's painting, distressing, stripping, refinishing, or replacing modern furniture with antique and vintage furniture. The options for adding charm to your home using furniture is literally limitless. It's just as far as your budget will take you, or as patient as you are to look for things within your budget. And let me tell you, I am patient. Some pieces I have looked for for literal years to get them in my budget and I'm fine with it. 13. Antique and vintage decor. Another thing that I love to use in my own home. Simply be not just because they are unique and you literally can't find some of this stuff in big box stores, but also because it has history to it. And so automatically I just think that's more charming is to know that this has been used for possibly a hundred years by another family and it has a story to it. I love that. There were such unique inventions in history, innovations in their time now completely overlooked. It makes me sad to find things that only serve as decor anymore, but in the same light, I am really happy that they are maintaining some kind of use and that we can still appreciate them. <clears throat> Last year, I actually repurposed an old East Lake mirror frame to build a laundry dry rack for the wall next to my laundry closet. I have a very tiny laundry room, and so I didn't have space for it in there, but I put it on the wall next to it with a pop-out shelf, and it looks gorgeous and it's a one of, one of a kind piece you cannot buy it in a store anywhere and those are the kinds of things that i think add the most charm to a home 14 light switch plates outlet covers and doorknobs probably one of the most overlooked places in the house if you ask me i would know because they are literally probably the first thing i notice <laughs> 
in a renovated room, mostly because they're literally almost always left out and they stick out like a sore thumb. You can find them at thrift stores though. I recently found one for $3 and it was an old brass switch plate and I put it up on the wall and it literally transformed the wall with $3. It's crazy. 15, pay attention to the art on your walls. Vintage illustrations, botanical prints, bird prints, paintings, and even fine art prints. This is something to put consideration into because obviously we have limited wall space and I want all the beautiful things up on my wall. So it's really hard for me to choose. Let me say, there is simply no need for you to go and spend a fortune on prints from your box stores like Hobby Lobby, Home Goods, Michael's Target, TJ Maxx, or any of the like. There are literally millions of free downloadable public domain art prints available at the tip of your fingerprints. At the tip of your finger. <laughs> fingerprints, get it? However, if you're not up to digging a bit, because you will have to know the artist's names to be able to find these prints, you can also pretty inexpensively purchase some on Etsy and then just print them at home or you can have them printed in larger sizes at a print shop for pretty inexpensively. I have a few personal favorites in the art department, but one real favorite is the bird prints by John J. Audubon. Their public domain and with a quick resizing in Canva can be printed to fit any size frame. And I'm actually gonna do a post all about this because I think it is not commonly talked about and it should be because his prints are gorgeous. 16, frames. Frames themselves can bring so much to a blank space. The styling, coloring, and varying sizes will add dimension and old charm to a builder grade home on the walls. I love finding vintage frames in thrift stores. None of this stuff has to be purchased new unless you're doing an actual project with wood. And even then you might be able to find scrap pieces or I've done an entire wood wall with pallet wood. So that was free. 17, hardware, furniture, and cabinetry, as I spoke of earlier. This was honestly the first place I started because it is one of the least expensive options you have for updating furniture and the least intrusive or time consuming. I love painting furniture, but I think I like hardware better. And thanks to places like Hobby Lobby and Amazon, you can find faux versions that are budget friendly in no short supply. 18, a faux fireplace or mantle. Build it yourself or purchase an old mantle and install it on your wall. There is absolutely nothing cozier than imagining yourself sitting next to a beautiful fireplace and a warm fire crack. The problem with this picture is that many of us don't actually have a fireplace in our homes. And to add a real fireplace would cost tens of thousands of dollars, which I don't know about your financial situation, but that's not happening over here. So definitely look into building one for yourself. There is a great tutorial by Mary from um, White Cottage Company here on YouTube and I will link to that in the notes description also. And she builds one from scratch, just from scrap pieces of lumber that she has and it's beautiful. 19, rugs, which is why I showed you my rug today. My brand new rug. Vintage antique or faux vintage and antique. When you're working on adding charm to a boulder grade home, don't forget the floors. And by floors, I mean rugs. If you are fortunate, you may be able to find the heavily sought after, in certain crowds, vintage or antique wool rugs on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or even eBay in your area. I actually have yet to find one in my area at all, much less at a price I could afford. So I have to rely on really inexpensive faux antique rugs from places like Amazon. Like this one that I just purchased. But let's be honest, I have five children and so it's actually probably better for me to have something like this that is really easy to clean and maintain because they're gonna eat on this and it's probably gonna have to be steam cleaned multiple times. And wool rugs, while they are easy to clean, I'm not sure that they're as easy to clean as these. And the nice thing is, is that these types of rugs still do exactly what I need them to do. They add warmth, character, and it is really nice to walk on. This particular one, is very padded, so I love it. 20, architectural interest. Corbels, spindles, windows, salvage pieces, etc. You can literally have a piece of history up on your walls, in your home, even if your home is not historic, and that's amazing to me. 
21, reclaimed barn wood. Natural wood tones and wood from historic structures. Again, a piece of history in your home. Amazing. The idea of an old barn being torn down really makes me sad, but it happens for many reasons, including the fact that the structure just isn't viable any longer. And if it has to be torn down, at least we can repurpose the gorgeous aged patina hardwood. You can use it literally every place where you would typically use wood. 22, functional decor. Now I had a heck of a time finding resources for this particular thing. Apparently there is not a whole lot of people out there writing about how to use functional things as decor in your home. And I think that's kind of sad because it's my favorite type of decor. I love things that have a purpose. Sure, things that are just pretty to be pretty are wonderful too, but I don't like to clutter up my entire house with things like that. I want things to be useful and beautiful. Like in a kitchen with your um, cast iron pots, if you display those, or your beautiful wooden utensils or crocs, clear glass pantry items on open shelving, wooden spoons, utensils and crocs, beautiful vintage cookbooks. Those are all things that I love and think that look gorgeous as functional decor. 23 is a pig rail. This has made a huge comeback, not just in the farmhouse scene, but like cottage, English cottage looks too, grand millennial style, lots of them. These are function and charm all in one. You can literally add them throughout your entire room if you wanted to for the ease of hanging something wherever you wanna hang it. And that's awesome. 24, antique mirrors. Another something that I use in my own home. Create a gallery wall or use them above a mantle or as a focal piece. They're a diamond in the rough for me, but when I do find them, I find it really difficult to abstain or walk away from them. Mirrors are just so versatile. Another great thing about them besides their gorgeous looks is that they reflect light naturally. So if you have any issue with low lighting in your home, add some mirrors to your wall to help reflect the light and spread what you do have all around. 25 curtains and drapes. There is something beautiful that a set of curtains and drapes adds to a room. Even if you don't technically need them, you need them, basically. Considering adding curtains and drapes for these three reasons. They add height to a room and draw your eye up to the ceiling. So especially if you have low ceilings, install them about five to six inches from the ceiling for best results. Two, if you don't get a lot of natural light, white curtains can actually brighten up your space considerably. I use white curtains in my home even though I do have quite a bit of natural light simply because I didn't want them to block the light. I also used to have blinds, which were dark wooden blinds, and I chose to take them out of my home to add in more light. Three, adding curtains or drapes and a sense of class, style, and grace to a room. Almost as if a room is not fully dressed without them. It makes me think of the zestfully clean commercial, if anybody remembers that. You're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean in my childhood. 26, mix and match. You can do it with furniture or decor, any kind of furnishings. Cottage, farmhouse, grand millennial, eclectic styles. I had no idea that this was actually my style until I really started to look at pictures in a video by She Holds Dearly where she goes into great detail about different styles. I do tend to mix and match my style with a heavy influence on antique and vintage. Do you know what your style is? I'm not even sure that I know what my style is. I think it's a mixture of a farmhouse and cottage and maybe even a little bit of grand millennial thrown in there. Maybe some modern. 27, paint your walls, go bold or go neutral. Paint is widely known as the easiest and one of the least expensive options for updating and completely transforming a room. And I do not take, say that lightly. It really does completely transform a room. This room used to be a hideous shade of bright big bird yellow the entire room when we purchased this home. And it was offensive, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Even um, for yellow lovers, I think that that room was a bit mustardy and just way too much for a space. But when I painted it white, it was like a brand new space. And even now, when I have painted the top that dark blue cyberspace by Sherwin Williams, it has completely transformed again. So whether you wanna go bold or neutral, either one can totally work to add unique style to your home. 
28, built-in cabinets or shelves. If there is one major thing at the top of my list for my future Victorian dream farmhouse, it's original built-ins. If you can't have an original, then building your own is the second best option, which I'm actually planning on doing in my living room. I can't wait to get that far. <laughs> I've already built the bottom cabinet. I just have to build the wall part. There is something so wonderful about a beautiful set of built-ins filled with carefully curated treasures from your thrifting adventures, your heritage pieces passed down, generations, or even traveling adventures. I will also be one of those with mounds of books stacked up as high as they can go on a shelf. I currently have six bookshelves downstairs and I have no intention on quitting my collection anytime soon. 29 tin ceiling tiles and by the way you can get faux tin ceiling tiles these days and there are some great tutorials that i've linked in my blog post for that do not neglect the ceiling i think i've mentioned this you can do tin ceiling tiles and a ceiling medallion and a vintage chandelier and it would be spectacular they may be the last place that we touch but they still need to be on our list I have yet to paint a single ceiling in my house. Isn't that sad? I haven't gotten that far yet. It'll probably be literally the last thing that I do when we put this house on the market. <laughs> 30, number 30, yay! We've made it. Focal walls, paint, wall trim treatments, wallpaper, large art, and a gallery wall. When I think of a large art focal wall that I was absolutely like, in awe of. I think of that show on Magnolia Network called Homework, where this huge family purchased a 20,000 square foot schoolhouse. And in their kitchen, she has a inexpensive way that she adds uh, vintage art, like massive sizes. Like it was like the entire wall basically. And she built the frame by herself using wood, trim wood and spray paint. And what the art was actually printed on was a banner. Like she had an actual banner printed out at a print shop and they used that as the art and it's gorgeous. So the nice thing about focal walls is it could literally be anything that you want it to be. It could be a bold color, it could be a wall treatment, any of the above. You can simply put a whole lot of something good on one wall and draw the eye immediately to that space and it creates and defines that space. It also gives you a lot of freedom elsewhere in the room to do other things. The focal walls in my home are typically textures versus color. Like in this room, the focal wall used to be the shiplap, but now obviously it doesn't have one focal wall. <laughs> well, I hope you have gained all the inspiration you need to go and dip your home in old charm and turn that builder grade house into the Victorian farmhouse, English cottage, or old granny home of your dreams. Well, friends, thanks so much for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks again. Bye.